Should I do this? <laughs> you want to ask him to say what? Oh, Steve, do you want to do that? that? Sick eyes. You're garbage. <laughs> Chow's here, if you didn't notice, and so is Orion. Hello. They're down here. We're going to be filming some videos. Go check out their channel, which I know I'm telling like nowhere near as many subscribers as what you guys have to go follow you. But, anyways, go follow them. We're going to be doing some rowdy stuff. <laughs> Video's probably gonna come out way before this, so if you go to their page and probably scroll back a few videos, you'll see what we do. Anyways, today I'm gonna run through building the front end for the pro car. I just picked up these knuckles from Franklin's house, and I picked up the front subframe off of the car that we rolled. That's a couple videos back. We rolled that thing over and pulled all the subframes off of it. This is real quick the subframe that we pulled off of that rolled car also And uh, now it's completely different fabricated and has a quick change in it Steven Thank you from still rolling co my older brother you can follow him on IG He built this rear subframe for me to house the quick change into the new e46 Which also by the way, we're doing a giveaway Hell yeah, Of dude. the Hail Mary you already know dude so this thing's gonna get given away to one of you guys. A couple of you guys that are on the support team are gonna get obviously a, a heads up because that's what you guys signed up for with your email stuff. But on that note, I'm just gonna get started in this pro car because the pro-am car is going away. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of how to do this. I'm gonna time lapse it and then I'll obviously like talk about it here and there. Just to get you up to speed. So far the front subframe has been pressure washed. The front steering rack has also been pressure washed and so have the knuckles. Really everything's just been pressure washed and it's getting ready to be assembled with all of our SLR goodies and, and stuff like that. But I'm doing some cleaning and stuff so I'll kind of touch base on what I'm doing so you guys can see it and then we'll pull out some spray paint and kind of touch some stuff up and make it look good before it all goes on the car and show you where you could paint and where you shouldn't paint let's get into it Are you listening? Damn. there you go all right so we are live you're on my head don't take that the wrong way Nasty, a bunch of nasty people. So far, this surface here is on the uh, hub. Let me get some gloves on actually before I get into that because I just felt that and that's got a bunch of oil on it. Um, the surface there is where the rotor actually sits against and you don't want to be having any kind of like residue buildup, rust, paint or anything really between that. It'll naturally get rusty. Like this one's still rusty where this one I actually just started hitting with this uh, wire brush and uh, taking some of that rust off. So it'll naturally build up rust but you want to try to get rid of the rust because you don't want anything in between that stuff you want it to sit nice and flat and perfect not have any corrosion in there same thing on the on your hats on your rotors where your wheel actually meets up you want the same thing so this is a little bit of an after it can be cleaned a lot better because it's got again it's got residue on it you can kind of see me wiping it off here this is probably as good as it's gonna get for us. We don't need to be 100%, but we'll just take off what we can take off. So I'll show you kind of how to get to the spindle from the spindle. So you kind of just go around it as this spins. And you can see it's just completely eating off the rust here. Don't want to get stabbed by this thing. It hurts really bad. That's why I'm trying to like hold this, but also avoid getting destroyed. So this surface is more of a preference for me. You don't have to have the rust cleaned off of like any of this back here, but it just looks a lot better. So when you do go out and do like some type of photo or video for like your sponsors and they're, you know, you got a video of the backside of this somehow, throwing a bunch of angle. If you just see a bunch of rust in there, it just looks poor. Like it doesn't look good at all. If you want, you can take some spray paint to the backside of this and, and kind of get it all you know nice and black or pink or whatever you're into i'll probably end up doing the back side of this stuff black and then if any paint does happen to get on this surface i'll just end up scuffing it back down again but i'm gonna take the uh rust off of these points here which is the caliper points i'll take it off of this surface here as well and the pickup point for the tie rod as well as getting in here for the coil loader so that we're not having any of that and here pretty much everywhere there's rust it's coming off this will be fast because it's a small surface I gotta put my foot on it so I can just hold it better. We'll do both sides of the brake bracket. One side, the bolt uh, head sits on, and the other side, the caliper sits on. So we'll just make sure they're both nice clean surfaces so we're not running into 
any kind of dumb issues that we don't need to deal with for not taking five more minutes to clean something. A little bit of a pro tip with these. As you use them, the bristles will start to twist a certain direction. So if you flip it and spin it the other way, it'll get like super abrasive again. So if you're seeing no material come off, flip the direction on your gun real quick and it'll start coming off quick. So that looks night and day, like I didn't even do this one yet. So you can really see the difference already just in the quality of cleanliness of it. If things are clean, it just works better. Better to work on too. Don't expect your crew to go dive into a super greasy car. All right, now for these inside ones, I do have a, oh my God. It gets me, dude. Whatever. Oh, you, when I was your age, I used to walk 15 miles in the snow to get to school. That's a pretty good old man voice. You kids nowadays, man, it's so easy with your iPhones and your Google. I thought I had another brush in here somewhere. This, this seems legit garage. Yes, it is. Nice. Their dual caliper setup is boost. Oh, dude, That's what I have on here. Amazing. 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 Shout out. Yeah. yeah. Huge shout out. Yeah. Seems legit garage. They make dope stuff. Shout out Drift HQ for carrying them. Because they're dope, dude. Yeah, yeah, and they dude. don't cost a lot. Seems legit garage. Seems legit. I love the name too. Seems, seems legit garage, dude. That, that seems legit. legit. Yeah. All right, I don't know where it's at, but I have another brush somewhere around here. It's probably at my mom's house. To be fair, anybody gets that reference? I know. Put it in the comments. You need, I'll tell you about where it's from afterward. But hopefully we can get some of this out of here with this here at an angle. Oh, this has like grease on it. So it's kind of, that's actually really nice. And it'll help keep the rust off too. Which is like kind of a pro tip if you're trying to keep rust off of like raw parts. Put like a little bit of WD-40 on the surface of it. It won't stay for very long, but it'll help you. If you're in the middle of doing like some fab work and you got to stop, spray some WD-40 on your stuff. And then the next day, the next three days, it should be fine to come back to without having to clean it. Shout out WD-40. Sponsor me. Probably like two of the things I wish didn't exist. Rust and cancer. They're like essentially the same they thing. They are, just rust is metal cancer. Right, just eats away for like no good reason. Just like go away, fool. I wish you didn't exist. So my mom calls you dirt, said nut maker. You know where that's from? No. Dang. <laughs> Put it in the comments. Am I too young? No, you're not too young. I'm just on culture then. Not, you're not on culture either. Uncultured swine. Like shut up, your music just sucks. So that's the knuckles. They're a lot cleaner. Now what we could do is just spray a nice coat of semi-gloss black on them to not make them shine, but not make them super dull. We'll jump through. <laughs> what did you just say? What did you just say? He said the forbidden line, dude. It's not allowed here. What forbidden line? I can't say it. It's forbidden. Say it with your chest, chow. It's too late. Go. Oh, Fine. <laughs> got lucky. We got our Rust-Oleum semi-gloss protective enamel. You like how I said that? Yes, I love it, actually. We'll just paint the whole thing black, except the surface, remember. No surface black. So I'm just gonna kinda hang this out here, spray it off my hand, so I got this glove on. Sorry about the trees, California. So I was like, don't spray my question off. <laughs> Call it what you want, bro. Barista, coffee maker, doesn't matter. It's a Cressida. Ciao. You said something disrespectful about my Beamer, all right? So yeah. you drive a Cressida. Let's be real. <laughs> and I'm going to have to clean off the surfaces that I painted. I just realized that I didn't tape them off. But whatever. I'll just go back over it and paint them real quick. Let me grab this at a different angle so I can paint the bottom side now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like a Laffy Taffy. Yeah, yeah. A banana Laffy Taffy. That is what it does smell like. Don't get it on my Veroso. It's just a crest of the chow, chill. It's got that factory Toyota Pearl on it. Does it? Yeah, it's got like a bluish tint when the sun hits it just right. I don't really know. I'm not really into Cressida, so I'm not sure what color they come in. Jealousy is such a strong word, chow. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that. Because I don't have an S chassis. <laughs> I don't want an S chassis, Chow. Stop it. I would do an S15. Let's be real, you would too. Chow, move, Chow, move. <laughs> Careful, dude, it'll get you. Chow, you love your Beamer. Don't even start. No. No? No. 
Dang. <laughs> How dare you? Hey, you're a lot warmer, aren't you? Uh, yeah, it's honestly, <laughs> uh, you, you were right, dude. The fiberglass back, dude. It's holding in the heat. Yeah, no, it is. It does the same thing at the track when you're sweating your freaking boom, it worse. everything off. Yeah, you're, you're extra sweating your you know what off in a seat like this. Your you know what is melted in a seat uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, you're in California too. I can't imagine a California summer. Oh, you got no clue, daddy. So I got these painted up. I'm going to end up scuffing the bottom sides of these real quick just to kind of get rid of that paint in between the pickup points top sides are gonna have washers so we're not too worried about that but the bottom sides are gonna sit nice and flat against the slr knuckle piece here pretty much with these slr steering plates is what they call them over there at the uh, slr factory there's a left and a right left meaning if you're sitting inside the car this would be the left hand side driver's side so we'll go ahead and show you how to install this and pretty much the objective is to get this to sit flat all the way across before having to snug it down so if this surface doesn't sit flat against the knuckle here and the surface doesn't sit flat against there then there's a washer that needs to get put in place in order to do that the reason they did that is because this goes on to multiple bmw knuckles like the e46 and i believe it does e36 non m m do they have a different non-m yeah, kit I think, so. I think this is it because i don't have a, an m you can go on their website and check out and then you'll select all that stuff either way the stuff's got to sit flat and so they give you spacers to fit different like knuckle styles we'll go ahead and show you how to install that real quick i'm going to clean up the bottom sides of these i'm going to do it the same way i did it earlier with the drill and the brush just take off the paint on just that spot be a little bit more cautious this time around because of the fact that everything else is painted what we're going to do is you don't really need this tie rod on just yet. These have a bunch of misalignment spacers. You don't want to lose any of them. Like this stuff all comes apart. So you want to put those back on the way they go and in the position that they send them to you in just because they set it up and they usually set up this pickup point in the right spot as well for the, uh, the tie rod. So Sean sends them out the way he prefers to run them and then people go and start making adjustments and that's why you have cars handling bad like... Uh... Whoa, what <laughs> I'm on cut numbers. Not that one, you know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> so we'll take off this and you can do this in order. Put the nut down, put the washer down, try to hold the stud in there because it will fall out. Take this bolt out and this washer up here on the top actually has some machine work on it. The nut goes at the very bottom, washer next, bolt goes through, washer on top of the knuckle. And then this washer here you can see kind of has a shoulder on it and that locks into the uh, knuckle. Sorry, not on the hair. So we'll go ahead and just slide this through and we'll put it right back together the way it came apart. Washer and then crimp nut. You can see there's a gap in between the knuckle and the steering plate. And that's where this washer is gonna go in there and it'll take up the slack that's in there. And now your steering plate is level and flat and you're not binding this uh, steering plate and causing any issues with kind of buckling it and cracking it or doing something like that. Which I have never seen one break beside when I hit the wall at Irwindale, which if your product withstands Irwindale's wall, pretty freaking amazing. Kind of like my proper fabric for your arms. Anyways, now that's pretty much on there and that's what your knuckle will look like with the slr steering plate installed everything's got to get tightened down and buttoned up this stud here will end up tightening down on i believe itself because it's tapered let me look at the other one so i can give you proper information yeah so this one here as you tighten it the stud will bottom out and it'll begin to stay stationary and then the bottom side after that's held in place the bottom one will tighten which goes to the control arm tie rod pickup point is fixed in the steering plate and then the front one you're going to need a socket and wrench or two sockets or whatever so i'll go ahead and install this one again slide that through there oh no don't drop these you talent powder uh, another reference dude I only have like one friend who gets all my references. Yeah, I've got zero so far. Yeah. Zero of <laughs> Listen here, Capitol Hill. Chow's just being a jerk. All right, so there you go. You have both of them. I'll go ahead and tighten them up just to give you guys a quick little feel on how they tighten down. Don't use a crescent wrench, Micah. <laughs> I'm like so bad. Just want to grab a crescent wrench and go tighten it all down.
So this isn't a 7 8 This is a 7 8 wrench. This is not a 7 8 bolt. Don't use a 7 8 but it does work for those of you who are at the track stuck. I don't have the 20, I think it's a 22, 22 mil wrench. I don't have it. I just use what I do have. So 7 8 works on there. And the other side is going to be a 19. And this stuff is like really good, but you don't want to over torque it. What the torque spec is, I'm not sure. I've done this enough times to where I'm not going to over tighten it. And then we need the uh, half inch ratchet, or we can just do two, two 19 mil wrenches, which would actually be a little bit nicer. All right, so here we go on the 19s. One of the things you want to make sure is that that washer there is settled, settled in all the way properly so that you're not destroying it. I'm actually gonna put them on the floor and tighten them a little bit more because I can't really get a feel for how tight they are right there on that table. So now those are nice and snug. You got the SLR steering plates on the bare knuckles. Pretty clean, it's already looking like a really good setup. This one's gonna be over here on this side. And then this one will be over here on this side. Which I prefer that side, read between the lines. And uh, <laughs> sneaky. 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 And then we have our DR Concepts engine mounts. So these will go here. And when we install the control arms, I'll show you kind of how those go. But I just wanted to give you a quick little rundown of kind of how to put this SLR steering plate on. I know there's plenty of guys who have done it already online, but I wanted to give you my take on it. This is kind of what we're going for here. Here's your stock knuckle with all the shielding and caliper and rotor and stuff on it and then here's your bare knuckle with the slr steering plate on it the next thing we'll do is we'll probably take some calipers off of these clean them up get them all nice and painted just because we want things to look good and presentable especially going into formula drift and then we'll take some rotors hopefully some good ones some nice clean ones that don't have a bunch of lips on them these are pretty rusted and corroded maybe buy some brand new ones and we'll add those to the system as well along with like our condor speed shop extended brake lines for the compensation on the angle kit. That's kind of that. Power steering rack is clean, subframes clean, and the uh, knuckles are painted, and steering plates are mounted. As always, thank you guys for watching. We got a uh, Holdfast merch going on at holdfast-usa.com. All those proceeds go to helping us do Pro 2. I appreciate everybody who's jumped in and already supported us and bought merchandise and helped us out. And it's kind of cool because it still keeps me warm. Like those dudes are freezing over there. Hey, your hack worked though, the fiberglass hack. The fiberglass yeah. seat, I'm telling you, it kept you warm, it, it bro. Worked. It worked. This is a nice hack. If you're cold and you're in California, <laughs> which is rare. Yeah. You just sit in the race car seat. It's the, your ass warm. It's the uh, the fiberglass backing yeah. traps in all the body heat. Yeah. All right, dudes. As always, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. Peace.